Hello, my name is Rachel Ludy. I am a nurse educator here at Mercy Hospital Trauma Center. Uh, my goal in this video is to educate our nurses on how to assist with central line placement along with care and maintenance of a central line. When a physician decides that they want to order a central line, you would go ahead and get the yellow um, crash cart um, and bring it into the room and all your supplies should be located in there um, conveniently. Different central lines that the physician may place are art lines, um, triple lumens, percutaneous sheaths, or what they used to call cordis. All these devices are located within that cart. So you go ahead and get that cart, um, and let's say the physician wants to, the trauma surgeon wants to put in a percutaneous sheath or a large bore catheter. Um, they may call it a cordis, um, and what that, what that um, product looks like is this one right here. And what you'll see is you'll have an extension coming off the main tube that you can um, apply a stopcock to. So then you have two ports here. And then also you have the sheath part. So, they'll, um, so you'll have a third one. And this is considered your large bore. Um, these also are used for patients up in the ICU for heart reasons, uh, for monitoring, etc. But this is um, the product that they would ask for if they wanted um, a trauma catheter or a percutaneous sheath or quartz, kind of all different names. Um, if the physician just wants to put a triple lumen in or a double lumen, um, the, the kits look like this. Um, the triple obviously would have three pieces hanging off um, and then this is the double. But it's got everything they need to, um, to place it uh, within this, this nice package. So. So let's talk about placement of the central line. There are three places that they can place the central line, including the jugular vein, which comes up through here, the subclavian vein, which is located around right here, and then the femoral vein. Typically, you'll see the physician place it in the subclavian vein. Here's a diagram that kind of gives you a better picture of where each located. Um, again, here's the jugular vein, the subclavian vein, and then the femoral vein. And then you can see this is a peripheral vein. Your physician says, let's go ahead and put this together. You get your um, uh, your package for him. You also want to, as he's opening it up sterile, get a few more things to place on his sterile field. I always think it's good to place an extra chlorhexidine just in case things get messy. Um, also with that, you want to place a blue biohazard patch. Um, again, blue to the sky once it's placed. You want to place three... Um, needle-free IV connectors or these little guys and then you'll also want to place a large tegaderm. Steps in assisting the physician with the insertion of the central line. Once a physician has decided to place a central line and a consent is obtained if applicable, the patient should be educated on what is going on. The physician will go ahead and clean the site with the extra chlorhexidine that is located in the top of the package and then you will assist him in getting into his full PPE. That includes a gown, gloves, and mask. Once that is done, the physician will go ahead and drape the patient. If the patient has issues with claustrophobia, please make sure you educate or adapt the situation for the patient's comfort. The physician will then go ahead and inject the patient with lidocaine um, into the location. So if the patient is getting in the subclavian, they'll inject it right here. Once the area is numbed with lidocaine, the physician then will go ahead in, insert the large needle that is located with the blue um, plunger into the site. Once the physician is comfortable with the location and is into the vein, so he will go ahead and insert the, the wire guide into the needle, advancing the wire just like so until it, he is comfortable with the location. A key concept to to focus on is that once the wire is guided into the superior vena cava, you want to make sure you're keeping an eye on the monitor. The patient will typically have some irritability with the heart and have some PVCs or runs of PVCs. It's important to tell the physician about that. That helps them with a good location marker um, as far as the, the guide wire. So once the uh, wire is located where they're comfortable with, they will take this device off <clears throat> and then they will also take the needle off. So this is what's left in the patient. They will place an expanding needle onto the patient, just like that. 
poking it through the skin, making sure that the hole is big enough, and then they will remove that. The next process is to go ahead and actually attach the central line itself. They will guide the central line into the wire, and the wire will um, come out the brown port, just like that. And once this is all the way down into the patient's skin, the central line technically is placed. They'll go ahead and suture this piece down, and they will flush this, making sure that they have good return. Um, <clears throat> this is a good opportunity for you to ask your physician, do you mind getting us some blood um, so that you can send a lab or whatever it may be. At that point, the physician needs to go ahead and put the bio patch on this and then place the large tegaderm. He or she will go ahead and clamp the tubings once they've flushed them or removed blood. You can ask or request that the physician go ahead and place the, um, the caps onto the device or you can simply wait. It is very, very important for nursing staff not to inject medication into the central line until you have x-ray placement. We don't know where, there, where this has gone. It could go up or it could go down. Typically when you see the ectopy, you're pretty sure that it went down into the superior vena cava, but you do need x-ray confirmation. So I just strongly encourage that, that this happens before anything is injected, including saline. So you've got an x-ray com um, confirmation, you can go ahead and flush your caps, put them on there, and utilize your device. This is an example of the double um, central line, and this is an example of the triple suture line. So you can kind of see the difference. And you can also see the difference in the bore of the lumen catheter. Really, after that, maintenance of the central line is including making sure that the line is flushed with 10 mLs after every injection of medication that the patient receives, and good documentation that it's working. A check of every four hours should be documented on a central line. Typically our patients aren't in the ER during that time, but it is important that about every four hours something is documented regarding the central line. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to assist physicians with central line placement. If you have any questions, please ask the Education Department. Thank you.